in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Welcome to the session, dear listener. I am Jack, your narrator, and I would like to take you on a journey into stories of Warhammer 40k. But these are not the official stories that more renowned narrators than I have covered. These are stories inspired by the rich lore of this universe. By the fans, for the fans. Let us begin. When the Curtains Fall by Kyle Tam When the curtains fall, the Mask of the Crimson Edge do not congratulate themselves on their performance, nor do they head off in celebration as another troupe would do. Instead, all the performers gather together, ready to receive the day's criticisms. After all, the troupe's effortless displays of skill and artistry are as much an illusion as their holographic afterimages and sonic disruption. If a turn is not sharp, if a thrust is not forceful, if a figure gliding across the room is not ethereal, they must be corrected. No member is immune to criticism. After all, whether trotting the boards or treading the battlefield, a single minute mistake marks the difference between life and death. Each takes on the patterns of their part in clockwork rhythm, time ticking ever onwards with each movement. Pirouette, Poite, Padishah, Arabesque, Thrust, Dip, Dive, Roll, Slide, Jump, Thrust, Swipe. Without hesitation, without imperfection, time moves ever forward in the smallest increments for the Masks members, allowing them to blossom and improve. Save one. Koranis cannot remember the last time they had received any critique, any input, anything except the briefest of nods as acknowledgement. There is no criticism for those who wear the black and purple of the solitaire. No kind words, nor solidarity. Only the staggering and deeply numbing understanding that their life was forfeit ever since they wore the black. After all, no one could dare to touch madness in the way that they must. Someone must play the villain, coming onto the stage to boos and jeers. Someone must cause the tears of the children, becoming the mask of the deepest one and feeling that stain on their soul. There is a necessity in darkness, but to acknowledge the presence of a solitaire is to acknowledge the sins of the Eldari. It is all well and good to depict such things in beautiful pantomime, to elude and to present them with banners and costumes, but when the spotlights dim and reality sets in, a solitaire's only companion is she who waits in the void. Your turns are too rigid. The music stops as all turn to the voice that has spoken. Clad in a thousand brilliant colors, each shimmering in all spectrums of visible and invisible light, is the troop master. Like all of his ilk, he wears upon his face a mask with an ever-present grin, the sign of those chosen by Kegorach. I've never heard such criticism before. Tilting his face to the side, there is a smile, almost audible in the troop master's voice. No, I suspect you haven't, or you would have understood how sloppy your movements have been. After all, you play she who thirsts the way that we see her, as a boogeyman, a villain, someone to be loathed and feared. Koranis purses their lips, hidden behind the darkened veil of the Devourer. Is that not who she is? The plague that will consume our souls? His echoes in their stage movements, stalking behind others as an ever-present and 
all-consuming maw. A shadow, a plague that embodies all that is evil. The Aldari, yes, but on the stage you are not Aldari, nor you Drukari, nor even a Harlequin. A single spotlight shines on the duo as the echoing organs and piercing strings of a violin begin to play. You are the thirster, the devourer, the seductress and beguiler. You are limitless, faultless, utterly inescapable. With each word, there is a graceful movement from the troopmaster each punctuating every word in a perfect sway or featherlight touch, enough to make Karanis shiver with anticipation. Beautiful. Perfect. You are not a monster to yourself. The world, the universe, belongs to you and yours. You are a queen, just in your ruling. For a second, Karanis hesitates. They do not remember which side of the schism they belonged to, whether they were a creature of the craft world or a marauder from Kamora. All that remains is loathing and fear of that which they must become. But if I embody that, will they not stray too close to the edge? Will they not forget myself and become that which has brought ruin to our kind? The troopmaster's laughter begins as a light chuckle, before echoing into raucous wheezing and guffaws, with just a hint of a sob at its edge. An imaginary tear is wiped from an obscured eye, a pretense of mirth hiding deadly seriousness. Oh, then you have no place among our number. We are not merely actors, not merely performers. We are the Harlequins, who have ascended from the limits of flesh to inhabit the masks we wear. You, my dear, were chosen to inhabit my Echo, my sworn enemy, my other half, and I will not tolerate imperfection. Nodding slightly, Koranis moves their feet into the first position, looking on at the rest of the troop. The Harlequins are no longer averting their eyes, pausing their own practice to gaze at the spectacle to come. This time, they allow themselves the looseness of succumbing. In their mind's eye, they look towards the gaping maw of darkness that threatens to engulf them, and instead of running, they smile. Jumping higher, twirling faster, freely moving without a care in the universe. This world is their world. This universe, their universe. And all of it belongs to her. At the edge of reality, she awakens for the briefest moment feeling a being reveling in desire. She reaches out to capture it, but it dances out of her grasp on feet lighter than air. It is both her devotee and her enemy, a twirling puppet of black and purple, always one step ahead of its own lusts. In the farthest reaches of the webway, someone begins to laugh. When Karanis opens their eyes, the rest of the troop has gone, leaving only echoing footsteps and a light shimmer of glitter on the stage. And so, with our story concluded, I would like to invite you to another reading at your leisure. If you're a person that prefers the written medium, then I shall share the link to which these tales can be read in the description. I am not affiliated with 40k cold open stories, I am just a man who enjoys the tales therein. Until next time, dear listener.